Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. And uh, a little while ago, I made a video called No More Wi-Fi, How to Wire Your House for Internet. And uh, in that video, I explain uh, if you don't want Wi-Fi in your house, you can run Ethernet cables everywhere. Uh, for example, like along baseboards or through heating and cooling ducts or and you install a bunch of switches, you network it all together and boom, you got rid of your Wi-Fi and you have a high speed, low latency Ethernet home network. So since I made that video, uh, like a gajillion people have sent me, you know, comments, uh, messages, emails, asking, uh, basically, uh, they say, well, I've got a house and I've got Ethernet wall jacks everywhere, so how do I actually use that? And I've answered that question so many times that I decided it's probably time to just make a video explaining many of the details, because as it turns out, it seems like it would be straightforward, but it's really not. There are quite a few details you need to consider. So, first of all, if you haven't watched my earlier video, No More Wi-Fi, How to Wire Your House for Internet, you should probably watch that one first, because in there I kind of explain the whole theory with like Ethernet cables and switches and how to connect everything together, and it'll give you kind of a, a general idea and some of the sort of uh, initial um, facts and things that you need to know. So watch that one first if you haven't and then come back and watch this one where I'm going to talk specifically about how to wire your house for internet if you already have existing Cat 5e or Cat 6 Ethernet cabling going through the walls to uh, Ethernet jacks in every room of your house. Okay, so here we have our house again and the first thing you'll notice is in the center, in the foyer here, you have your, your ISP's modem or router and that's where your internet connection is coming in. And obviously from there you need to connect to the back of the ISP's router in the ethernet jacks as I explained in the first video. You can connect to gizmo directly or you can connect uh, a switch to the router with an ethernet cable and then to that switch you can either connect more switches or actual gizmos like laptops, desktops, smartphones and tablets and so on. So this is basically what we start off with. And this is what we actually did in the first video. When we don't have Ethernet wall jacks, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to uh, put a switch in, say, down here in the family room. We're going to run an Ethernet cable through the walls, through, you know, cooling ducts, whatever, to the router. And then we're going to connect more Ethernet cables to each individual little gizmo. Then you can daisy chain two switches together up into the upstairs office, so you can hook multiple devices up there. Or, uh, over here in the master bedroom, if you only have one gizmo you want to hook up, you can just run a cable from either a switch, or in this case the ISP's router, uh, up through the walls, blah blah blah, and to the master bedroom, and boom, you're done. So this is what you would do if you didn't have Ethernet wall jacks. But what if you do have Ethernet in your house already? Well, that would look something like this. So the first thing you're going to notice is that there are Ethernet jacks in every room, including the bathroom, because, well, who doesn't want Ethernet in their bathroom? And uh, all of these jacks are wired to a central patch panel. Now, the patch panel is here, uh, in this case, underneath the stairs. Uh, underneath the stairs, very often you'll have a closet. Um, all of these jacks are wired, as you can see, with these blue lines here, each in Ethernet jack, uh, there's an Ethernet cable connected to it, and that goes to a central location, which in this case is the patch panel underneath the main staircase. So the first thing you're going to need to do is determine if you have Ethernet jacks in your walls, which is pretty easy. The second thing you're going to need to do is actually find this patch panel. Now, it's entirely possible that uh, there is no patch panel but there should be a central location where all of the RJ45 or Ethernet jacks are connected to. So that may be uh, in a closet somewhere. It might be upstairs, it might be in the basement. It's usually located uh, next to, say, your electrical circuit breaker panel. Sometimes not. Sometimes, say, the uh, circuit breaker panel is downstairs in the basement and uh, on the first floor in some closet somewhere, that's where they routed all the Ethernet cables. It just depends, and you're going to have to to locate that panel. But as I said, you may not even have a panel. You may just have a bundle of Ethernet cables coming from the wall jacks, and they may just be kind of left hanging there because whoever built the house never really finished it. They just said, well, let's just run cables in the walls, but we won't actually use them yet. It's just kind of for, you know, the next owner, or maybe we'll get to it someday, or maybe they decided to use Wi-Fi. So 
the first thing to do is to find that panel or that group of cables. But in any case, this is the kind of setup, and as you can see with these blue lines, each Ethernet jack is connected via an Ethernet cable that's inside the walls of your house to a central location, which should be a patch panel. Now, in the case of already existing Ethernet wiring in your house, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to have to connect a switch to the Ethernet patch panel underneath the stairs. Um, now, I'm going to get into patch panels a little bit into, in a little bit more detail shortly, but a patch panel may look complicated, but really all it is is something that turns Ethernet cables into connectors. Um, it's, it's not an active device, it's passive. And as I said, I'll show that in a minute so you'll understand a little bit better. But the one thing you're going to need to do is actually put a switch under the stairs there, connect each, each port on the patch panel that's going to a wall outlet. You'll need to have a short Ethernet cable going from the patch panel to a switch that you can buy. And you may already have this existing switch, so you're going to have to find that out too. If you don't, you buy the switch, you connect each cable coming from each outlet in each room that you want to connect with a short little Ethernet cable, which you can just grab off Amazon or whatever, to that switch. And then you can see uh, to the left of the stairs there, our ISP's modem, well, that's just connected via a short cable to the Ethernet wall jack. And that wall jack is, of course, connected to our patch panel, which is now connected to our switch. Then you have four other pink lines or Ethernet cables going to the patch panel, from the patch panel to the switch. Uh, that means that uh, up here in your master bedroom, uh, you only have one computer, so you just hook that guy up with an Ethernet cable. Then over on the other side of the house, you have your upstairs office. Uh, in that case, you have your wall jack, and you want to connect that to a switch, because then you need the switch to have multiple Ethernet ports, one cable for the smartphone, one cable for the computer. And same thing downstairs in our living room. You've got a lot of gizmos, including a smart TV, so you just do wall jack, to Ethernet switch and then connect another Ethernet cable to in each individual gizmo. Now when we compare this to the non-wall jack scheme, obviously it's a lot easier because you don't have to drill holes through walls, you don't have to run an Ethernet cable hidden underneath carpets or along baseboards or through heating and cooling ducts or whatever. Uh, part of your network is basically already done for you and so it kind of simplifies things a whole lot and keeps everything uh, much cleaner. Okay, so that seems kind of simple, but then the question is, well, what about these patch panels? Because there are multiple different types of patch panels. There are Ethernet patch panels and telephone system patch panels, uh, security system patch panels. Uh, when you see your panel, how do you actually know, you know, how do you hook it up? Or like, how do you even know what type it is? So next we'll take a look at the different types of patch panels. So here we have an example of an Ethernet patch panel. And as you can see, all the blue cables, they go through the walls of the house to the Ethernet jacks. Now, this may look like it's kind of hairy and complicated because you see wires coming out of the cables and, oh my god, what does it all mean? Well, Ethernet cables consist of four pairs, four twisted pairs of wires. That literally means that there are eight wires and the wires are separated into four pairs of, obviously, two wires, and each of those four pairs of wires are twisted together, and that's f for reasons of signal integrity and increased speed and immunity to noise and all, all that sort of thing. So when you look at the wires coming out of an Ethernet cable, uh, well, you have eight different colored wires, and those need to be attached to what is called a patch panel. But all the patch panel is actually doing, as I said, is it's turning a cable into a connector. So as you can see in the red rectangles here, Basically, that blue cable on the far left, you punch the wires down on the panel, and that gives you a place to plug in an Ethernet cable, which you can then connect to your switch. So each of the cables coming in on the bottom uh, is connected to the Ethernet jack above it. That's pretty much all a patch panel is. Now, as I showed with the drawing of our house, you need to connect each cable uh, in, on the patch panel to a switch. So the way you do that is you just take a short little Ethernet cable and plug it in. The blue cable on the far left, that's the leftmost Ethernet jack, and so on. Now, in this example here, I have a big red X through two of the jacks because I said, well, those two on the far right, those two blue cables, you know, one of them goes to the bathroom and the other one goes to our broom closet. And, you know, we don't need Ethernet in our broom closet or our bathroom, so I just won't connect those. You don't actually have to connect everything. You can just pick and choose. So you can say, well, these seven cables going to the wall jacks, uh, six cables, rather, uh, those are you know, where I want my, my internet service, 
And so those are the ones I'll connect to the switch. And just to make it a little easier to, to understand here, uh, your blue cable on the far left, he comes in, he gets connected to the patch panel, that's connected to the ethernet jack above, and as you can see from the yellow arrow, the patch panel is simply turning a cable into a connector. So effectively, a patch panel is extending the length of, an ether of the ethernet cables. Whatever cable goes in, it goes out somewhere else, and it's sort of like turning two shorter cables into one longer cable. So um, really, a patch panel is just a way of connecting things. It's kind of like you connect two garden hoses together with the proper connectors. That's it. It's, it's very, very simple. So although the wires may look scary, it's actually pretty straightforward. Now the next question is, well, where do you connect your router? and you can actually put your router anywhere. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, in this example, we're still not using the two uh, jacks and cables on the far, uh, the far right, but there's this one cable in the bottom that's yellow, and that yellow cable is colored so that we know that one goes to a wall jack where we've simply plugged in our ISP's modem. And then as you can see, that yellow cable goes to the terminals, which then goes to the purple cable on the far right, which is also connected to our switch. So you can actually take your ISP's modem slash router and you can put it anywhere there's an Ethernet wall jack and just plug it in there and all the, the other Ethernet outlets in your house will have internet access. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is, let's say you have your electrical panel and maybe your patch panel right next to it and that's exactly where your ISP's router is located. Well, in that case, you could actually make your own Ethernet cable. You could crimp a connector on one end, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. And on the other end, you take the yellow cable and you use that unused terminal and you just punch the wires down. And then you add one extra yellow Ethernet cable from the far right Ethernet jack up to the switch. And boom, your router is now providing Internet access for everyone on the network. The important thing to remember here is that when you're doing an Ethernet uh, house network, uh, you can plug a computer directly into one of the four Ethernet jacks on the back of the ISP's router. You can connect a switch to the ISP's router. You can connect a switch to another switch. And you can connect gizmos, including computers, to any of the remaining ports. So that's basically uh, how it works. It's very flexible, and it's pretty hard to get that part wrong. Okay, that's an Ethernet patch panel, but what about this thing? What the heck is that? Well, this is actually a combo panel, and it looks kind of scary, but it's not. It's a little bit larger than the Ethernet patch panel, and of course we have this extra row with white lines drawn in between. But basically you'd see something like this, and you can see the yellow cable in the upper left. That's actually the phone cable that comes from our phone company. Now for phone lines, typically you only need two wires, but in this case, let's say we have four uh, phone lines coming into our house for some reason. Well, the leftmost three cables are, are yellow, and that's because they're used for phone service, and the right five blue cables, those are used for Ethernet. Well, okay, what's going on there? Well, with a combo panel, it works exactly the same. You have wires punched down on the bottom, and depending on where you punch the wires down, you'll get either uh, phone service or Ethernet service. The phone service, as shown in the red box there and with those little white lines in between, uh, if you punch something down to the terminals in the red box, that's for phone service. And those white lines indicate that all of those terminals are connected together. At the bottom, you see that the, uh, the blue cables, those are connected to not the top terminals, but the bottom set of terminals. So this is because for Ethernet, uh, your connecting point is actually the switch. So for Ethernet, you have to connect each, each cable to the bottom row of punch-down terminals and then plug a cable into the Ethernet jack up top, which then goes to a switch, because with Ethernet, your connecting point is actually a switch. With telephone lines, uh, your connecting point is actually the patch panel itself. If you want to add another telephone jack to your house, uh, you probably know all you have to do is find an existing jack and you can just connect the wires directly together. Ethernet does not work that way. Ethernet, the connecting point, is a switch because the switch has to intelligently route traffic between all the different gizmos connected. So if you have uh, this kind of combo panel like that, uh, it looks a little scary, but it's really pretty simple because in the yellow box, that's your phone connections, and in the red box, those are your Ethernet connections.
Okay, so this is another example of a telecom distribution model. Now, like, what's going on here? Because there's this ADSL modem thing, and there's this little square in a box, and, like, what is this? Is this an Ethernet panel or a phone panel? Well, this guy would usually be hooked up like that. Uh, on the left, you have the phone line coming from the company, which is a single line, so we'll say it's a red and a green wire. Then you have your DSL modem plugged into that ADSL modem jack, which is not an Ethernet jack because it has four contacts in it, and Ethernet jacks have eight contacts. So that ADSL modem jack, that's a phone jack. Then you notice in orange there, it's labeled the DSL filter. That's to uh, filter the high frequency signals and pass them only to the ADSL modem jack. And the rest of the terminals one through eight, those are all tied together. And off of some of those, you would have more, say, red and green wires that would go into three different cables that would be routed to telephone jacks. So if you see something like this, this cannot be used for uh, home Ethernet. Um, and it gets even more confusing because you may have something like this, which is actually for routing telephone signals, but the actual wall jacks aren't 4-pin RJ11 jacks. They're actually the 8-pin Ethernet jacks. So it looks like it's Ethernet, but it's actually not. Isn't this fun? Here's another example of a bridged telecom module. Now this one is really crazy because there's different numbers of wires and like what's going on here. Well, on the left you see it says line in. And basically what's going on here is that that red and green wire, the cable marked in orange, has got a red, green, uh, black, and yellow wire coming out of it. That's actually the phone line in from the phone company. So the red and green wire is line one, and that's connected in the red box to uh, the blue and blue and white stripe terminals one through eight. That's all in the red box. Now we have a second phone line coming in on the yellow and black wires. That's in the green box and that's obviously also connected all along the way to uh, the, the eight cables coming off of the patch panel. So that probably means that you have two phone lines coming in and those two phone lines are routed to every uh, wall jack via the gray cables. And then the last thing is kind of confusing because we have in the yellow box, there are five, five of the actual terminals are connected to a green and a green and white striped wire. Uh, but there's no phone line in the line in terminal on the left. There's no phone line connected to that. So what the heck is that for? Well, that could be for a lot of things. It could be for an intercom system. It could be for some fancy type of phone system. It could be for security systems. It, could be for a lot of different things. Um, one of the important points here is that if you see something like this, this is most likely not high-speed Ethernet, because for high-speed, you know, gigabit and up Ethernet, you need to have eight wires connected to your punch-down terminals. So uh, if you don't see eight wires, it's not for Ethernet, and you're going to need to uh, add an Ethernet patch panel. Also, you note that there are no RJ45 jacks on here, so if there are no Ethernet jacks on the patch panel, well, it's obviously not an Ethernet patch panel. It's got to be used for telephone service.